fact that the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore started several years ago, and I call it as the Chalikere experiment, and I'll tell you more details of it. It is basically on training teachers at a center that was formed when the Institute of Science celebrated its centenary year in 2009. But before that, let me tell a little bit about myself. I started the school when I was in class five at my grandfather's house in Mysore. And I taught the subjects that I learned that day in my regular school, and in the evening I conducted this school. And the children that came to attend this school was the neighborhood children. I had two ch uh, children, the two students in the first year, and then it went on to eight students by the time I finished my standard seven. I particularly remember the Independence Day of 1965, when my grandfather gave me five rupees so that I could celebrate the Independence Day by buying stationery and pencils and rubbers for my students. This was very profound. I had, I, I had a very profound effect on me. He was very proud that I started the school in his house. Several years later, when I finished my Indian school certificate exam, I had three or four months I went home in Madras where my younger sister was studying a SSLC exam and I taught her some physics, chemistry, mathematics. And believe me, it's only when I taught her that I understood the principles of physics and chemistry. And more than anything else, she did extremely well in this subject, the subject she dreaded the most. I think teaching then, uh, I mean, I concluded that teaching was actually a passion that I have. And it's also a skill, but more of a passion. In 1989, I joined the faculty of the Department of Biochemistry at the Indian Institute of Science, where for the last 32, 33 years, I've been teaching biochemistry besides conducting research for, uh, on protein nucleic acid interactions. I wouldn't talk about that research, but in order to tell you that teaching has always been uh, with me from my childhood. The Indian Institute of Science was founded in 1909 with the combined efforts of a collaborative effort, actually, between Jamshedji Tata, the government of India, and the Maharaja of Mysore. And the institute is known as one of the foremost institutes of education and research. And in the centenary year in 2009, the government of Karnataka gave us 1,500 acres land in a place called Chalakere, which is in the Chitradurga district, one of the most backward districts of Karnataka. At that time, the then director of the institute, Professor Balram, decided that we will not replicate all the programs we have in the main campus, but we'll start something completely different. And one of the first programs, and only program that is still going on there, is the teacher's training program. Both Professor Balra and Professor Hegde, who was then the Dean of Science Faculty, who actually conceived the whole idea and meticulously planned how we should go about. And the whole idea was that we would teach science and mathematics to high school teachers, to pre-university teachers, to university teachers who teach by bachelors of science and masters of science. So I'll just show you one or two, a couple of slides and then we'll go through the next slide and things like that. So I call this a sparking transformation because we are transforming the science education in this country. All right. So the important, this is the building. The government of Karnataka, besides offering the land of 1,500 acres, also gave us two buildings. And this is one such building, which owned by the Department of Animal Husbandry. 
It was an abandoned old sheep breeding farm. We converted the sheep breeding farm to a regular center of science. This is the new building, which I'll talk about it later. Oh, sorry. This is how the sheep breeding farm was. And then we converted this open space to a training center. The idea of teaching teachers was we found that teachers generally from government and government-aided schools and colleges were very poor in knowledge. They were so poor that some of them didn't know how to divide 10 divided by 10.5. It's really pathetic. It is not only in Karnataka, we now found in the last 14 years that we get teachers from Bihar, we get teachers from uh, Andhra Pradesh, we get teachers from Odisha. The general, uh, uh, the distinguishing uh, feature of these teachers of government and government aided schools they're extremely poor. They're very poor in knowledge. And therefore, I think this idea that we should teach teachers was a fantastic idea. And remember, on an average, a teacher anywhere in this country teaches about 100 to 120 students per year. And therefore, when we thought that we would teach teachers, it would have an amplifying effect, a ripple effect as well. And this is what we have been doing for the last 14, 15 years, and I'll just tell you a few things about what we have done here. All right. Besides the two buildings that the government of Karnataka gave us, they also gave us 32 residential quarters, which are shown here, for example. Uh, this is the one. Oh, sorry. How do you do the pointer? Ah. Pointer is not working. So this is one of the quarters here. These are the 32 quarters. We had a small dining hall. We had a kitchen. A very dedicated staff. The then secretary of the Karnataka state, uh, Amlan Bishwas, was very, very supportive of these programs. And the government of Karnataka helped us in establishing some of these centers. We started the glass blowing section, a workshop. This was an ambulance, a mobile hospital that took us to the hospital nearby. And we set up this whole system of training program. This is the new building that came up in 2020 with the modern classrooms, modern laboratories, and fantastic dining facilities that we have. The teacher's training program that we do at Chalakere campus at these three levels, level one, two, and three, four, the high school, the pre-university, the BSc, and the masters. The course is usually 10 days to 12 days to 21 days, and about 100 to 120 teachers are brought in during this period. We run about 20, 22 training programs in a year, and therefore we have at least 2,000, 2,200 teachers who are actually going through this training program at the Talent Development Center. Now, one of the union, you know, there, there are a lot of teachers' training programs in this country, but none of them have, or most of them don't have an experimental setup that teachers can actually do experiments. And therefore, the unique feature of our teachers' training program is that during the 10 days or the 12 days or the 21 days, most of the time, about 70% of the time, they do experiments. Every teacher does every experiment which is there in their textbooks, in the syllabus, for example. And we, in turn, have converted every sentence, literally every sentence, into an experiment. So you explain the concept by actually doing the experiment. For instance, the Charles Law, the Boyle's Law, the Gay Lussac's Law, the reaction order, or molecularity of a reaction. Oxygen comes out, carbon dioxide is taken by plants, they're all done by experiments. And every teacher does this experiment here. The mathematics uh, teachers, in turn, are learning to solve problems. About 400 to 450 numericals are solved in a period of 10 days. They're taught how to solve problems. This is all from the syllabus that you have. 
And this is where we find that our training over the last 13, 14 years has resulted something very, very noteworthy. And that is, in 2019, uh, 10 years after the program was started, a survey was conducted from about teachers who came from schools where they sent their teachers to our training program and the ones which didn't send, and found the results that more than 40% increase was there in their students getting 60% marks. You must remember one thing, the principal of many of these schools have only one thing in mind. They, they recommend and they just want all their students to get pass marks, which is 35%. You get 36, you are not appreciated at all. And that is where the TDC has changed the mindset of many of these schools saying that 35 is no good, but your students can get 60, 70, and 80 percent. So that is the effect that we think has, uh, you know, it really stimulates many of us to continue to do these programs. We follow the NCRT textbooks and very strictly follow whatever is taught in this. These are the books that, we, the manuals that we have made at high school, at 12th standard at BSc and MSc level, and these are the bright of experiments. You just learn about the theory about these experiments in schools, but to come and do these experiments is the thrilling part of it. Most of these instruments have been designed, innovated in the institute, in our ta talent development center, and now in turn we have made these, we have found entrepreneurs to actually make this and then give it back to the schools so that their experiments can be done. But tragically, we found that many of these schools who have taken our kids, the principal has just kept it on the top of the roof. They've never brought it down, and the students or the teachers have used these experiments at all. The whole thing about teachers, the principals, and the school is what dictates how science education is done there. I'm nothing against our principals who have arts background, but if they, have, if they do not have a science background, science subjects are actually pushed aside. Science means the physics, chemistry, and the biology. And this is the tragedy that we have, and we are trying to do this. And I think in Karnataka, we have done about 20, 25,000 teachers training at our center. Initially, it was the government of Karnataka, and now we have the government of Odisha, Bihar, uh, Goa, who send teachers. And the whole idea is that these governments or their administ administration boards give us the funds so that they can, their teachers can be trained. All right, these are the experiments. Diffraction, E by M of electron. These are all very standard experiments. Most of the schools does go by theory. But to actually do the experiment is more thrilling uh, completely. The one exclusive sign of thorough knowledge is the power of teaching. And I think this is the principle, the philosophy behind the Talent Development Center. Biology, for example, they do it very nice, interesting. Mathematics is not about numbers, equations, and computations, and algorithms. It's about understanding. And this is what we try to convey to them. Now, before I conclude, this is the uh, final slide, but I think this is a very nice uh, saying by Benjamin Franklin. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I love. So the philosophy of, of the Talent Development Center, before I say uh, this is the end, just pause for a moment and think that if one teacher teaches 100 students on an average, I think my strong recommendation is that every state in this country should have one or more talent development center, that more and more teachers are taught, and we have this amplifying effect, uh, the ripple effect as it were. Now, the last thing I want to say before uh, 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 I conclude is that this has been a very rewarding experience. All the staff of the Institute of Science actually go, go to Telekere, which is about 230 kilometers and we actually teach and come back here. We have never 
got other teachers from other uh, universities and centers, but the idea now is to expand this. And more than anything else, private firms through corporate social responsibility have funded. The HAL has given us this whole building, equipped it with equipment, buildings, laboratories. CSR funding has been a major thing for us here. And in 2015, when Prime Minister Modi visited the institute and he heard about this TDC, he told the secretary who was sitting next to him that I would like to have his TDC in almost every state, although that has not happened at all. And then the central government took over the TD, I mean, funded the TDC, a program called Pandit Madan Malviya Mission for Teachers and Trade. It's very important that people recognize that knowledge imparted by the teachers is mo most important. And that knowledge, for a long time and still now, is low, and therefore we need to improve the teacher's knowledge, which will then excite, stimulate students to do and take up science. So I'll stop here, and thank you very much.